Well, happy noon, everybody. We are past spring break. We are days from the Alley Awards being presented. And by the way, if you're watching this webinar and you don't know what the Alleys are, you need to mark your calendar for April the, April the 12th at four o'clock in Davidson Auditorium. We are doing the tradition of the Jindal School in the form of the Alley Celebration. It is a wonderful ceremony where we celebrate outstanding, worthy leaders involved exceptionally. So please try to mark that on your calendar and come. You get to see some great entertainment. You'll get to see some great awards given to students, faculty, alumni, and community people, even an employer. Uh, and we would love to have you come. I think we've got some dancers and a magician and a singer and maybe a little band or something that are also performing. And by the way, folks, awesome food after the alleys. I'm talking about free food. So you may want to come see the alleys and then join us for the celebration afterwards. Um, other than the alleys coming up, I know finals are coming up. I hope that all of you with about three weeks left of class, that you are kind of shoring up your ship in the sense that if you need to work a little bit harder to improve your grade before the end of the semester, you're doing that. Or if you're having a challenge in a course, you are reaching out to a faculty member. I was surprised yesterday um, when I got a call from a student who needed help in a class and she first didn't start with the instructor. So you always want to start with the instructor, start with the TA. If you're having any kind of a challenge in class, um, you want to do something about that now because you know a big portion of the grade has already been determined for the semester. So it might be a final exam that's left, an exam and a final paper, a group project. So make sure that you're shoring up your grades. Now, I do have one big announcement. It's for any students that might be listening to us that will have been on probation. You will have gotten a letter from the advising office, and I'm going to bring Angela Howard into the conversation. She is our assistant director for graduate advising. And do you want to talk about that for a moment for the students that may have gotten that letter just to remind them of some important details? And then we're going to get on to some other important announcements after that. Angela? Yes, thank you, Dean Powell. So yes, uh, some students who are on probation did receive uh, an, an email regarding uh, their probation period and how we're handling enrollment at this time. So um, those who are on currently on their second semester of probation are essentially have one more semester to raise their GPAs up to 3.0. Um, so if you are one of those students, you received an email that lets you know that you can enroll yourself for one semester, either summer or fall. Um, and this allows you to have a little bit more freedom when it comes to how you enroll, but we still have parameters when it comes to this. So for all those students who received it, like I said, you have to enroll in one semester, uh, summer or fall. If you enroll in summer, we will assume that you do not want to enroll in fall. And in the next month, checking periodically, um, at the end of, April, beginning of May, we will then drop you from your fall classes if you are enrolled in summer. Um, as a student who's on probation, we recommend that you do not enroll in summer because it is a shorter semester and it is very accelerated compared to fall and spring. So we want you to do the best that you can. So please do not enroll in summer. Um, at the end of so this semester spring, if you're able to raise your GPA to the 3.0 um, and get back in good academic standing, you will no longer be on probation. Then you can decide if you want to add a summer class, one or two summer classes. Um, even if you're on good standing, we don't recommend you take too many courses because you want to remain on good standing at that point. Um, the other thing we want to remind you of when it comes to probation is that you should be repeating a class that you failed. If you have not done so yet, do that in the next semester. Um, sometimes the class could be a C. It's not a truly a fail, but that class could still bring you down when it comes to your GPA. So maybe consider repeating that C if, if you see that you need that, um, even those small points to raise your GPA above the 3.0. I know a lot of students don't want to do that because one, it is not free to repeat a class, and two, you do want to continue making good progress towards the end of your degree, but if you don't have a good GPA, you may not get the degree. 
at the end of that. So please remember to look at that. If you have any questions, come talk to us about that. Um, we can look at your degree audit. I know everyone is scrambling to enroll this first week, but okay, fine, enroll in, your, in classes this week and then next week come in and really talk to us about what you should be enrolling in if you are unsure. Um, we also recommend you talk to your program directors and your program support staff. They're there to assist you when it comes to making decisions on what you should be taking when it, if you think if you're thinking about your career or just um, if a class is worth your while for the next semester if you're concerned about your GPA. Um, and the other thing I, I just say in general, don't try to take too many courses. Students always wanted to go as fast as possible because they want their degree as soon as possible, but sometimes you need to just slow down. And those are, that's like the biggest thing that we see here in advising is people, they want to take 18 credit hours in one semester. We'd never, re never recommend that for a student. So we all know that you're going to have a limit of 10 credit hours for summer and 13 credit hours for uh, the fall. Uh, and so we release those deadlines that uh, that's on our, our JSON webpage, you'll see the, the release dates. But even after that release date, we recommend that you take the minimum number of classes that you need to, if you have a visa, remain in good standing for that visa. And if you're not on the visa, that you feel that will be good for you to raise your GPA. So some people will be only nine or 10 credit hours. Some people, it could be six if you don't have a visa. So just consider slowing down. Maybe the, the fast, 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 is what caused you to get on academic probation. And maybe you just need to slow down and en enjoy your classes and, en and enjoy your time with us at UTD. Those are my main well, things when it comes to probation at this point. Angela, you did a masterful job of covering a whole lot very quickly. Let me Thank jump you. in and just do my Dean commentary on a couple of those. Okay. Um, first of all, remember international students. You are not required to be enrolled in the summer unless it is, of course, your first semester. If it's your very first semester, which you probably aren't going to be watching this webinar, but international students do not need to be enrolled in the summer. So you don't want to get in a big rush to fix your academic problem in the summer because, again, it is a compressed semester. It isn't 16 weeks long. It's 12. So you are doing you know, much longer individual classes in a much shorter period of time. The other thing that I want you to really keep in mind is that the biggest mistake, the absolute biggest mistake that a student will make when they are going into a third semester of probation is being unwilling to repeat a class. And I know that that's more money coming out of your pocket and it wasn't maybe planned, but the quickest way to repair your GPA is to replace the bad grade. So if you have two courses where you may have gotten a C, then you may need to think very, very hard about, you know, retaking one or both of those classes. That will get you in a better situation a whole lot faster. The other mm -hmm. mistake that I think students make is that they enroll in classes in the summer thinking, oh boy, it's a summer, not so much going on, and I'll get after it and I'll improve those grades. Then they get distracted by beautiful weather. They get distracted by their aunt that calls them to go to the beach for two weeks. They get distracted by their boyfriend or their girlfriend that wants them to, to go with them to visit their family somewhere. And then suddenly the semester is over, the summer semester is over, and they're in the same shape that they were before. So the other piece of advice that I would give to a student in this situation is use the summer as a great time to really maybe study the class that you're going to retake. Get ahead, get out on YouTube, look at the book that you used in the last class, review the syllabi, get out on YouTube, get on LinkedIn Learning, um, go visit with a professor, look at all the supplemental materials from the class. Do your part to make sure that the experience that you have when you retake a class is going to be a good one. So, wow, I really went off on a long pontification there, uh, Angela. So, uh, certainly had a lot to say. Now, I know the other big news, aside from the alleys, and yes, you should go to the alleys on April the 12th at 4 o'clock. Um, sorry if I brought that up again, but I really want a full audience there. Um, but the next big news is that registration is open. And so I want you to talk again about the limitation of class enrollment and how many credit hours they are limited to 
and explain to them why they are limited and then when we open it up so that they could take more classes if they uh, if they wanted to. Yes, so um, there is a limit on enrollment at the beginning of enrollment because we have a lot of students. Uh, I mean, I think JSOM grad is at, I don't know, 5,000? We ha we have about 10,000 people, over 10,000 people in JSOM general, but we have about 5,000 people on the grad side. So uh, there's a lot of classes and a lot of you, but sometimes people like to hoard classes uh, and they will enroll in classes that they truly don't want to take. Uh, and that causes some backup for other students who really do need this course to take, uh, to either raise their GPA or to graduate or just for their own, um, you know, just to complete their degree. So JSOM has, uh, a while ago, we've incorporated a um, a limit. So for the summer semester, you have a limit of 10 credit hours that you are able to enroll yourself in. Um, and for the fall is 13 credit hours to enroll yourself in. There is a uh, a time where you are able to enroll yourself higher than that, and it's on our web page. And I'm, I'm going to ask Norma if she can put that in the chat. If you go to the JSOM website, do we have graduate policies? And under all of the graduate policies, we list any deadlines that you guys need to remember. So if you go to our website and look under a registration credit hour limit, it will give you the deadlines or the, I guess, the release dates. For summer, the release date will be May 5th. On or after May 5th, you'll be able to enroll in additional credit hours so you can enroll in up to, oh, thank you, Norma. If you go to students, advising, credit top and then go to JSON policies. And if you scroll down, there's the undergrad and the graduate policy. So we can just go right there. So if you go to the registration credit hour limit, you'll see that every fall and spring, there is a 13 um, credit hour limit. And for summer, there's a 10 credit hour limit. May 5th, on or after that date, the registrar's office will release that um, limit so that you can enroll in up to 18 credit hours for summer, again, we would never recommend that, but you are able to enroll if you choose to do so. And for fall, the deadline will be, or the release date will be Janu uh, January. Wow. <laughs> I wish it was January. That's Christmas time almost. It will be July 28th. Um, that on or after that date, you will be able to enroll in up to 18 credit hours for the fall semester. We do not recommend anyone take that many, but if you absolutely have to, you have that ability to do that. Um, if you do want to take that many courses, I would recommend you talk to us um, so we can you know, give you a little bit more information on what to expect um, and also talk to the faculty that you would be working with because they may expect more from you than you realize in certain classes. So maybe you, you think, oh, 18 is not so bad, but one individual course could be many, many hours of your time. So I would recommend that you reach out to a lot of different resources, us, faculty, program staff to make sure that that would be the best for you. Yeah, you know, Angela, I want to jump in. You know, many, 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 many years ago, we didn't put a limit on the number of courses that a student could register for. And the problem that resulted in that is that we had students who decided that they wanted to test every class and then they would drop them and it ended up stealing seats away from students that needed seats in classes. So that's the mm -hmm. reason that we limit the number of hours that you can enroll in so that we can give everybody a fair shot at getting the classes that they need. And then it opens up, as Angela said, you know, right before. So those students who want to add other classes or do the add drop thing can certainly um, do that. You know, I want to bring up another topic, Angela, because I think mm -hmm. that this is an important topic um, for our students who are planning to do internships in the summer. There always are a lot of students that are getting internships up until the last moment. Can you please talk about the internship approval process? I think our students somehow forget from the time that they took MAS 6102, you know, that you have to report the internship through handshake. You have to submit the letter of offer that that letter of offer has to have a physical address on it and has to have a start and an end date. But can you talk specifically about, you know, how it works if a student gets an internship very, very late? and kind of what that looks like, yeah. Angela, because I think we have a lot of students who just 
either aren't paying attention because they're so busy or they just flat get confused. Yes. So um, for the internship process, as Dean Powell said, there you do have to have permission. You have to be approved by the program um, and by the Career Management Center. So when you submit your internship information, which is your offer letter or whatever other supplemental documentation that is required, you're going to submit that into Orion, into the internship request area, and your student, Orion, um, and it, it goes through a number of, of offices. That can take time. So it can take at least the, at the minimum 10 days for, and that's business days, not weekends, business days for all of this to be processed. Um, because of that, we are also on uh, a timeline when it comes to enrollment. Advising is the office that enrolls you at the very end of this process, but we are um, bound by the university catalog, which means that we can only enroll you uh, by deadlines that the university has allowed us to do so. Those university Enrollment deadlines do not always line up with one what the um, what the job wants you to do, or what is on the website for the CMC, the Career Management Center for internship deadlines. We can only enroll you by a certain day. So if you do it too late, uh, we may not be able to enroll you in your internship. So you don't want to lose out on that opportunity. Uh, so I always recommend students as soon as possible, submit that information. If you get something back, because there are times where uh, they get a pushback from the program or for the Career Management Center that says they, that they need something extra, please be checking your email so that you, if you get that pushback, you can submit whatever documentation is needed as soon as possible. That is one of the biggest things that happens, at least on our side, when students come in and say, I don't know why my internship is taking so long. Instead of reaching out to the program or looking in the system to see what's missing, they come to us. So I would say, please uh, periodically check the internship system, reach out to your program if it's been more than 10 business days to see what is happening. Um, but I also want you to keep in mind that if you're a part of a very large program like business analytics or ITM, you know, they get a lot of students submitting internship uh, requests. So also be, uh, be mindful of their time because they are getting them out as soon as they possibly can. But it is a lot of, um, you do have to keep on, on task when it comes to internships. Um, and on the website, the CMC website does have all the deadlines. So I would recommend that you check those. And if you are looking for internships and are having issues, reach out to your programs now, reach out to the CMC now. Maybe they can provide some guidance, some tips that you could be using to maybe make yourself a better candidate for the internship um, so that, you know, we you are UTD students, so uh, you come with a reputation behind you. So you really want to make sure that you're putting that out there for the companies to, to see that you are the best candidate for the job. Maybe you need a little, a little help and, and they're there to, to assist you with that. Yeah, internships are so important, and I know that students are scrambling up until the last minute to get them. But but once you get them, and once you have, um, you know, uh, posted your request for internship approval and handshake, don't barrage people with like eight million emails. You know, you've got to give it some time to go through the system. So please follow the procedures that are on handshake. And uh, and make sure that you're not like sending 800 emails to the ISSO and to the Career Center, to your program director, to advising, because you've got to let it work its way through the process as well. Also, when the intern, if you are an international student, the internship goes through a, uh, um, uh, an additional approval process, which is through the ISSO, where they're going to make mm -hmm. sure that you are eligible because you can only do so much internship in a calendar year. And so they're gonna make sure you're eligible and then they are going to be creating a new I-20 so that I-20 says you are eligible. And that is something that you are gonna to want to take to your employer. But I think Angela, there might be a couple of other little things that are important as well. Yes, I wanted to, you brought up the ISSO. So sometimes people think, um, I don't know why, but they think that uh, all of the I-20 information is created in JSOM. It's not. Um, so please remember that the, the 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 process goes, you submit the program request to the program for internship 
it goes through your program and the career management center. If it is a remote internship, there's another part of it that needs to be uh, approved and they will do that automatically. And then once you get your email from your program that says that you are approved, you must forward that to JSON GR advising at utdallas.edu. And I would say in your email, confirm the number of credit hours that you want to enroll in. Because if not, we will have to go back and forth to make sure that, that you, you want this internship and how many credit hours you want. If you can confirm at the beginning and know that you will not be able to change this as well, make that confirmation in your email, we can then enroll you. And as soon as you are enrolled within, I would say about 24 hours because the system does this automatically, it gets sent over for the iComet. And then, then they start the process for your, your I-20 and then it's done automatically. And if something is needed, of, of course, you will be contacted. But you have to remember that is the, the workflow of it. So if anything happens within that workflow, um, you know, you have to address it. Um, also, as Dr. Powell said, you know, do not barrage anybody in that workflow because it does slow down the process. But if you look on the website, at least for CMC, I want you guys to uh, look at those those dates. And if Norma, I know I ask you all the time, could you bring up the CMC website so they can see it as well? Um, they give you dates for when to submit your internship request. Uh, it will be under careers at the top. At the uh, very by, top. Right by news. The very top navigation bar. There you up. Oh, no, there you go. Right there. Perfect. And then for students is the easiest thing to do. So I, internship works too, but I like to go to, for students. Um, and then you can just scroll down. So it gives you a lot of things. I want people to just look at this website in general. But some people are not familiar with it. Please come because oh, right there. There's there's events there that I want you guys to be um, aware of. So people will come in and ask us for resume assistance, and there's a lot of things going on at JSOM. So I just wanted you guys to be aware that these events are happening. Please go to them. There could be a lot of things that you're missing out on that are essentially free as a JSOM student. So please go to those. Okay, now now please um, click internship Norma. I just want people to know that there's there. So. Um, the request approval for your internship in Orion, if you click there, it's going to give you information on how to do it. I, please read that. But right now, I want Norma to scroll down and you will see finding an internship that gives you all this information. Keep going. For graduates. So here, for graduates, it gives you all the prerequisites. If you click on the prereqs, you will see one of them will be MAS 6102 as well. So please pay attention to that class, do well in the class, attend that class. Um, but it, it gives you everything that you need for this. Uh, and if you scroll down, it gives you timelines. Oh, wait, yeah, reporting. So for summer, yes, most people will do it. These are the timelines that are required for CPT and internship. But if you notice, these timelines don't always match up with the timelines on the academic calendar. That's where you have to be very mindful of um, when you're submitting your internship information. Because for the academic calendar that is our, our major timeline, we can only enroll you in a full-term internship by a certain date. Um, now, if you are, and I will I'll pull up the calendar as well, and but if you are- that, Look at that time to allow for processing. That is a really important bullet at the bottom of the screen, yes. if Norma can scroll up. If you hit on that time for, uh, just scroll up just a little bit, Norma. Oh, down, I mean. Oh. Other way. There, there you go. go. And just hit on that. You're going to see it tells Seven you specifically the process. Yeah. So that's why, it, you know, be patient is the third bullet point because it does take time. And if you are in a larger program, you may have a lot more students that are, are signing up for internship along with you. Um, but they are working. I can tell you now that the programs are working very hard to get all of those processed. And once they are processed, we will be working very hard to get you enrolled. Um, summer, luckily, is uh, you, you have the opportunity every semester to enroll in a full-term internship or a second half internship. Of course, we're working to get you enrolled in all of those full-term internships. But if you um, are approved late, we'll most likely be enrolled in the second half of the semester. Um, that doesn't change how you work. In your job and your program can talk about this more, but the class itself will be enrolled for the second half of the intern of the semester. 
man, we just have a lot of information that we're giving to our it's students. It's a lot. We're giving mm -hmm. a lot of information about, you know, what do you do if you're on the second semester probation? We're talking about course registration and those uh, that minefield that you want to stay away from. And now we're talking about internships, which I think internships uh, aside from probation give students uh, the greatest amount of stress. And we yep. realize that for international students, these internships are, um, you know, an important means to getting an OPT extension, potentially an H-1B, you know, offer and, you know, potentially uh, better than that, a green card in the U.S. And so we realize that these are um, critical issues for you, but nothing happens in an instant. So you have to be well educated. Take your time to go to these web spots, read the information that is there, make sure you understand the process before you um, have an anxiety attack that something isn't working the way that you want it to work. So I, I hope that you'll think about all of those things. And I hope you'll also be really thoughtful about what you register for in the fall. We have a lot of great classes and your programs are the best destination um, to get information about should I go with this concentration or that concentration? Should I take this set of electives or that set of electives? And if you can help the program director by telling them where you, what is the job position that you're looking for? What's that ideal job that you want when you graduate? They're gonna help give you the best advice about how you should concentrate or specialize your degree so that you are the best candidate in the pursuit of that particular internship or final placement position. So we've covered a lot, Angela. It's been a very busy year. Um, so I would like um, really to open it up the floor. Um, Norma, do we have any questions from our attendees today? Or have we just barraged them with so much information that they don't have any questions? Uh, no questions submitted just quite yet. Well, I want to give um, our, our attendees an opportunity to ask some questions here uh, because we'll stay on another three minutes or so. If you have a burning question, please feel free to ask it. Um, we welcome all of you. I just want to give a couple of uh, announcements uh, as I already have. Uh, don't forget to attend the Owlies, which are on April the 12th at four in Davidson. We're going to have a really great time. We're bringing out our owl mascot for students to interact with the owl ma mascot and TMOC. And we're going to have a great celebration from four to five and then a wonderful um, reception event with lots of food, folks, uh, at that event. So please <laughs> join us for that. So Norma, before I wrap this up, any questions at nope, all? Nope, no questions. <laughs> well, the one thing that I love about that, it means that our students are listening very carefully to the topics that we're covering. Please do not hesitate ever to reach out if you have a question about anything. If you have a general question, you can always go to the JSOM question desk. You can always send an email to grad programs. Uh, Norma can put that email in the address box. Um, uh, the advising office has a centralized email system as, as well, jsomgradvising at utdallas.edu for course registration, graduation questions, um, and then always reach out to your degree programs. They are often the best source for the quickest answers to the questions that you may have. So please connect with us, stay in touch, enjoy the beautiful weather, hot weather that has suddenly come upon Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, get ready for fall, get your class registrations taken care of. If you're one of the students that's on probation, get after making sure that you get the best grades you can this semester so that you solve that problem. And if you need any help, never hesitate to send an email to Jendall at utdallas.edu. We will always get after answering those questions quickly. I want to thank Angela. I know your office is just under attack right now with registration open, so it is a hopping and bopping place. I want to thank Norma for making sure that we get on the air and that our recording gets done and it all gets posted. And I want to thank our students for taking time out of their busy schedules to come and chat with us. We hope you have a great rest of the spring. We hope the rest of the semester ends well. Please stay in touch with us if there's anything that we can do for you guys. We'll be back here uh, for the next grad uh, chat with the Dean. I'm not sure when, but just look for those promotions in your email. Thanks so much for joining us today.